You ever wonder what the world will be like if one day, just one day, God decides to let our emotional scars be visible? Can you imagine the screaming, the monsters amongst us, and how we cringe in fear over our own creations? Or what if God decides to be sadistically creative by tearing down the boundaries that keeps the inner demons from running wild? Here we live in a world where horror resides with ghosts that lurk within the dark, the monsters underneath our bed, them unknown terrors that haunt our galaxies, and how far we humans are willing to go to prove the existence of these supernaturals. But why? You ever wonder why? That may be the reasons why humans pursue these fantasies and fables is so they can find something that can relieve them from the anguished pains of reality, from screaming throughout the night. A remedy from the real horrors. Personally, I find it amusing when humans deem society boring, dull, and how they've grown exhausted with most of the human race being hidden behind this bullshit image of positivity. If they only knew, what horrors are truly hidden behind that plastic smile and facade. Now imagine, if there came a day when God grows tired of the cowardice and ignorance, exhausted over the charade, and all of a sudden we humans are blessed with the courage to be our true selves. Imagine the day when we see humanity for what it truly is, when our demons are freed to run wild. Nobody knows how it began, and nobody knows where to begin. Our story is a horror that has countless beginnings and many endings. Overall, it is a story that will never end until the final human draws his or her last breath. But if you want a place to start, for today's story, I think we'll start on a Sunday evening at a place called Jim Jr.'s Diner, just a small joint full of regulars going about their own business and monotonous routine. Yes, if you want to start, then let's start with a moment when he entered a diner. A random stranger whose shirt was covered with blood. How the man reeked like piss. To this day, Stan will never forget how nobody noticed the guy when he came into the diner. Until he walked up to the cashier and tossed a blood-covered slab of meat and bone onto the counter. Which looked like a severed spinal cord from an animal. It wouldn't be until much later before Stan found out it wasn't from an animal. At first everyone thought it was a prank. You know, with today's world with them reality shows and YouTubers doing stupid shit. But no, something about this was different. Something about this guy did not feel right with Stan. The man said nothing, but clearly his body language was saying a lot. Also had these rashes on his face as if they were forming into a pattern of a red cross. The man looked both ill and driven, possibly a junkie. That's what Stan assumed when looking around and seeing nobody filming with their phones nor any cameras outside. Obviously Jim didn't take too kindly to the man's presence, nor the prank, which he thought it was a prank. Seeing his share of junkies and weirdos wandering into the diner, Jim wasn't hesitant in tossing out another freak playing Halloween. It happened so fast, nobody didn't see it coming when the man grabbed Jim's head and bit off his nose before Cindy smashed the man's face with a coffee pitcher. You would have thought that the scolding coffee burning the man's face, decorated with glass shards, would have him screaming in pain, but the guy just kept laughing as blood poured from his face. It was like the sick fuck was enjoying the pain. Cindy was tending to Jim, trying to control the bleeding from his torn nose. But before anyone started conceiving the idea of calling the authorities after adjusting to the reality of the situation, Stan remembered the brief moment of relief when hearing the sirens outside, before those feelings turned into a concern when hearing the sounds of crashing. Outside was a patrol car that had just crashed into a building. Immediately tending to the scene, Stan could see the driver's body on the smashed hood of the car. The man's neck and body was broken, and yet, he was still alive, barely. 
At first Sam thought the man was choking in pain, but he was actually laughing, or at least trying to. Much like the junkie, he too had the same red rash pattern and the same sadistic drive on his face. And as the patrol car erupted in flames, to Stan's horror, he could see that two men were still alive in the car. One of them, a cop, screaming in pain as with the other preventing him from escaping. That was the last thing Stan saw before both men would be engulfed in flames. Stan wanted to save the man, but how? And staring at the cop's burnt hand reaching out from the flames, Stan just watched the final signs of life trying to free itself from the pain, a last hopeless effort to be saved. What the hell is going on? Five minutes since that guy entered the diner, and now a patrol car engulfed in flames, followed by a sudden sharp piercing noise that knocked Stan to the ground, deafening his hearing to the chaos around him. Right above was an airliner flying too close to the ground, nearly crashing into the town hall. It was like the airliner had no control. Everything around Stan had lost control and running wild. Way too much was happening, way too fast to process. Stan just sat there, deaf and dumb to the birthing of this new world. Could not understand what was happening, still deaf to the growing sounds of sirens, explosions, and screaming that was now filling the midnight skies. The city was now bright with an orange glow. The city was on fire. Burn, baby, burn. Stan didn't see it when Jim came out of the diner and ran up to a guy next to him, stabbed him with a kitchen knife. When he saw Jim widening the wound with the knife and watching Jim fit his stubby erection into the stab wound, Stan was trying to get a grasp of what was going on, one shock after another. It was like his body was denying every urge to have his arms and legs work again. Stan trying to get his shit together so he could pull Jim off the guy. Of all the horrors that was unfolding, Stan was at least thankful he was facing the wrong direction when the sky, the world around him was suddenly erupted by a blinding light. Stan, still trying to understand, was this a terrorist attack? Was it China? Russia? It was like his mind was now throwing up whatever words that matched the picture. And when Stan finally stood up, gazed upon the explosion at the other end of the city, now numb to Jim, raping the man's corpse right next to him, his frantic laughs to the man's suffering cries. Stan just stood there, watching the chaos unfold around him. The birthing of a new world. The beginning of the end. Till this day, nobody knows how it started. Nobody knows if it was a terrorist attack, an experiment gone wrong, who was the first to get bit, or where the disease came from, if it is a disease. Six months down the road, and still no answers. No way of anyone doing any real research for a cure. Not when humanity is too busy running, hiding, surviving. It's doubtful if humanity would even stand a chance of surviving the cross. That's what we call them, the crossed. There is one theory, however, which explains why nobody is praying these days. That this is God's judgment upon humanity, which happens to be quite a popular theory. Maybe it is true. Maybe one day, God just got fed up with the bullshit. Yeah, he just got sick and tired of it. A meteor would have been a merciful end. But instead, the good Lord decides to take away the very thing that keeps our demons at bay. Ten minutes. That's how long it took before the world went to shit for Stan. Ten minutes. Before God and everything else stopped making sense. But for some people, maybe it does make sense. Maybe God is a sadistic cocksucker. For some people, maybe this is a war against God. And you know what? After everything that followed that night for Stan, maybe, just maybe, they're right about that. Maybe this is a war against God. You'll be hearing things about blood sacrifice, death, occultic symbols, the upside down cross, possession, distorted faith, darkness. All these things are involved in satanic worship.